हेलो वेलकम बैक सो टुडे वी आर अगेन विथ अ न्यू वीडियो इट्स ऑल अबाउट सक्सेस गाइडलाइंस ओके सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द बेसिक्स एज वेल एज चैप्टर वन एच आई वी गाइडलाइंस सो दिस इज अ कंटिन्यूएशन पार्ट ऑफ चैप्टर वन सो इन दिस वी विल बी कंप्लीटली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट sepsis guidelines so uh, all the points regarding sepsis guidelines will be discussed in this video before entering into this video if you are watching my channel for the first time please do subscribe and if you find it useful please do share it with your friends also so before uh, i have to tell you one point um, like if you have any doubts regarding this uh, topic you can put it as a comment or Uh, you can just ping me in whatsapp or you can mail me also and one more thing take a notebook take a pen with you write down all the guidelines which ever is discussed in this part and make a note of it and once we complete with the video may uh, uh, take that notes and start revising it understand those gu uh, guidelines completely and then if you need any practice scenarios to practice by implementing this guidelines you can just ask me through uh, whatsapp or through mail also i'll share you a few questions so that you can easily implement those uh, guidelines in those questions and you can try like how it is working out for all uh, for doing all these questions and everything you need icd code book with you so make sure you are having icd 10 cm coding book if you don't have that also you can mail me and share you the pdf so you can work out okay so this is all about the content and uh, before uh, starting with the ppt if you are looking for cpc training or medical coding training you can just register with us fees will be there so you can register with us and we will help you with placement also it's a complete package okay and if you need only placement assistance after completing your cpc certification then also you can contact us we will help you to get placed okay so this is all about the thing now we will be starting with ppt before starting the ppt if you haven't subscribed my channel please do subscribe and if you have any doubts make sure you are clearing it then and there itself okay so we'll continue with the ppt thank you so today we'll be seeing about sepsis severe sepsis and septic shock infection resistant to antibiotics okay so first of all we uh, this is the previous uh, videos connection part that is uh, chapter 1 already in the previous video we have seen about the hiv this is a second part that is in chapter 1 we will be uh, seeing about hiv and sepsis right so hiv is completed this is sepsis guideline for sepsis first guideline is identify the specific type of sepsis so in this case if a patient is coming to the hospital for the treatment of sepsis primary code should always be for sepsis if it is unspecified organism code a 41.9 and if the organism is specified instead of 9 give the organism code so that is the first guideline second guideline patient admitted in the hospital for severe sepsis even though the patient is admitted in the hospital for severe sepsis primary code will always be for sepsis and second code should be for severe sepsis with or without uh, septic shock r65.21 or 20 so this is the second guideline <clears throat> and uh, third guideline is sepsis with organ dysfunction so if with this present between two diagnoses it it means that it is it means that it is related so first we will be coding for sepsis second we should code for severe sepsis with or without septic shock third you will be coding for organ dysfunction organ dysfunction in the sense renal failure respiratory failure etc so next is acute organ dysfunction that is not clearly associated with sepsis not clearly associated means they are not related to each other in this case first code for sepsis second code for organ dysfunction so severe sepsis is not required here so this is a guideline so next guideline which we are going to see about sepsis is sepsis or severe sepsis with localized infection underline the word localized infection localized infection means cellulitis or pneumonia 
for this we have two types of guideline first thing we have to check for what purpose the patient is coming to the hospital for what treatment for example the patient coming to the hospital for the treatment of sepsis severe sepsis and localized infection first code sepsis second code severe sepsis third code localized infection second guideline patient admitted in the hospital for localized infection after admission sepsis or severe sepsis develops in this case first code for localized infection second code for sepsis third code for severe sepsis with or without septic shock so what you understood with these two guidelines the reason for encounter should be the primary diagnosis so next is sepsis due to post procedural infection when coding for sepsis due to post procedural infection it is essential to capture both the post procedural infection as well as sepsis so hereby i have given the list of post procedural sepsis code first you have to choose the primary code from this category and second you have to code for the sepsis and third if severe sepsis is present you can code for severe sepsis so as i said first will be the primary code for post procedural infection uh, and second will be for sepsis code from a41 series this topic is little bit uh, confusing and difficult in the sepsis part other things are really easy to understand only read each and every line and understand okay next third you have to identify the infectious agent which means the sepsis code a41.02 or 01 whatever it may be the sepsis code should be assigned second so first will be for the post procedural infection and second will be for the sepsis as i said third if severe sepsis is present third code you should assign for severe sepsis and finally if any organ dysfunction is present final code can be coded for organ dysfunction so that's all about uh, post procedural infection that is related to sepsis in this way only we will be coding this topic next one which we are going to see is so the next topic here i have given an example a patient develops sepsis due to post procedural wound infection caused by mrsa after surgery and the patient is also having kidney failure so first code we are coding for post procedural sepsis from t81.44 and second code you are coding for sepsis due to mrsa a41.02 third you are coding for severe sepsis without septic shock r65.20 and finally you are coding for organ dysfunction so next topic is post procedural infection and post procedural septic shock in this case if um, we have already seen no like if and is present between uh, two condition you have to code it separately so first we will be coding for post procedural infection second you have to code for post procedural septic shock and if any organ dysfunction is present third you can code for organ dysfunction next one is sepsis and severe sepsis associated with non infectious process underline non infectious process and right fracture burns neoplasm pancreatitis are considered as non infectious process so primary code will be for non infectious condition secondary code should be for sepsis and third code should be for organ dysfunction in this way we will be coding for sepsis severe sepsis and non infectious process hereby i have given an example like a patient is admitted with acute pancreatitis developing sepsis with organ dysfunction so acute pancreatitis is a non infectious condition that's why it is assigned as a primary code second you are coding for uh, sepsis and third will be for severe sepsis and finally you should code for organ dysfunction next one hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with sepsis first code should be for hemolytic uremic syndrome that is d59.31 this code includes sepsis so no need to code sepsis separately and second code if severe sepsis is present you can code for severe sepsis with or without septic shock so that's all about hemolytic uremic syndrome associated with sepsis next is sepsis due to mrsa and mssa mrsa and mssa is an organism mrsa means methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus mssa methicillin susceptible staphylococcus aureus so sepsis due to mrsa you will code a41.02 and sepsis due to mssa you will code a41.01 
It's a simple topic. Next is MRSA colonization and MSSA colonization. What do you mean by colonization? Colonization means a group of organism carrying the disease is called as colonization. For MRSA colonization, you have to code Z22.322 and MSSA colonization, you will be coding Z22.321. So that's all about colonization and next we will be seeing about Zika virus. If Zika virus is confirmed, you have to code A92.5, confirmed Zika virus. And if in the documentation, if the provider has documented like Zika virus is suspected, possible or probable, confirmed code should not be coded. Instead, you have to code for exposure is a 20.821. So that's all about Zika virus. Next is coronavirus. Confirmed COVID-19, you have to code U07.1. U07.1 is a COVID code. If it is confirmed, you have to give the primary diagnosis as U07.1. And encounter for COVID-19 exposure, you have to code it as exposure code. That is Z20.822. And then um, COVID with respiratory problems. There will be a lot of respiratory problems when a patient is affected with COVID. For example, the patient might have pneumonia, bronchitis, respiratory failure so far. So first code should be for COVID-19 and second code should be for the respiratory condition, whatever it is mentioned. If it is pneumonia, first code for COVID, second code for pneumonia. Next one, acute bronchitis, first code, uh, if it is related to COVID, first code for COVID, second code for acute bronchitis. Next, bronchitis not otherwise specified, first code for COVID, second code for bronchitis not otherwise specified. You have to read the documentation very properly and see whether it is related or not. Then only you have to assign in this way. Next one, lower respiratory infection. First code should be for COVID. Second code should be for lower respiratory infection. Next, acute respiratory distress syndrome due to COVID. First code should be for COVID. Second code should be for acute respiratory distress syndrome. Same thing applies for renal uh, respiratory failure also. First code for COVID. Second code for respiratory failure. So these are the respiratory condition which is completely uh, related to COVID. Next one, screening for COVID-19. Screening means what? Testing. Okay, if the patient is coming to test whether he is having COVID or not, first you have to code for screening COVID. That is Z11.52. Next one, signs and symptoms without definitive diagnosis of COVID, which means the patient is having all the symptoms. Finally, when we tested, it shows negative result. In that case, you should code for all the symptoms. Next, uh, um, signs and symptoms with uh, asymptomatic who tested positive for COVID, code for only COVID. Next, personal history means what? Already the patient uh, had COVID, uh, which means it is an history. So, personal history of COVID should be coded. And if the patient is coming for follow-up visit after COVID-19 as result, code for Z09. And second code should be coded for personal history of COVID. Encounter for antibody testing is at 01.84. Multi-system inflammatory syndrome, MIS, which means all the systems are affected. If it is, uh, if COVID is uh, present along with MIS, first code should be for COVID, second code should be for multi-system inflammatory syndrome. Next, if the... Um, Individual with a known or suspected exposure to COVID and no current COVID infection or history of COVID develops MIS. First code should be for MIS and second code should be for exposure to COVID-19. Third, you have to code for any complication that is related to MIS if it is mentioned. Next guideline. Uh, we have to uh, next guideline uh, is post covid infection that is after covid infection has resolved if any of the condition is arising due to this covid you have to code it as post covid infection that is u09.9 .9. and finally the immunization status immunization status you have to check whether the patient is partially vaccinated or not vaccinated not vaccinated is a 28.310 partially vaccinated is a 28.311 so so that's all about uh, HIV guidelines, sorry, sepsis guidelines. Next, we will be seeing chapter 2 that is neoplasm in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And if you find it interesting, share it with your friends also. Thank you so much.